Hello, my name is Jim Gardner. I'm the Medical Director at Blackpool Teaching Hospitals NHS Foundation Trust. This is my COVID update on Wednesday the 20th of October 2021. In terms of our inpatient numbers, they're pretty much the same as last week actually, although the mix has changed uh, a bit, which is important. So today we've got 54 patients who are within 14 days of their first positive diagnosis and another 25 who are in hospital because of COVID but are beyond 14 days. We've got six or more in critical care um, and I say that because that situation is moving quite rapidly at the moment. We've got 33 patients on our general wards and 15 over in Clifton. So we've more on the BVH site that la than last week and certainly a larger number of patients who are really very, very poorly. Um, and that's an important piece of the story. Um, I'm sorry to say we had three deaths last week uh, of patients within 28 days of their first COVID diagnosis. Um, so as ever, um, my condolences to friends and family, loved ones of, of those patients who've passed. That takes the whole total of COVID deaths since the beginning of the pandemic to 828. The numbers across the community are quite striking and they've risen <clears throat> pretty dramatically since last week. So uh, Blackpool shows 535 positives per 100,000, filed at 462 and wire at 718 per 100,000. I think that might be the highest we've ever seen it. Um, so, so that's baked into the system. So that's a concern to us obviously in terms of increasing rates coming into hospital. Um, immunisation wise, uh, now the data shows everyone over the age of 12 having been immunised. So um, for Blackpool that's 71% of the population over 12 have had full course, that's two doses. 80% um, for filed and 79% for wire. So <clears throat> it's absolutely crystal clear that the immunisation programme is the key strategy for staying on top of and ideally beating this problem. So for people who are eligible to complete a first course, please, please do so. And absolutely, as I've said before, that should include uh, women who are pregnant or who are planning to be pregnant. Across the country, I think it's true to say a fifth of patients in critical care at the moment are, are ladies who are pregnant or who have had a baby and are COVID positive, so in, in the COVID positive unit. So that's a really worrying statistic and we do know that the immunisation is safe both for mum and baby. Um, but in terms of boosters as well, <clears throat> there seems surprisingly to be a lowish uptake of uh, COVID boosters and yet this is a fundamental part of the strategy of keeping everybody safe, keeping the population safe. So if it's more than six months since your first course and you're over the age of 50 or you are between the ages of 16 and 49 and have another health condition or you are a uh, frontline health or social care worker, you should be getting a, um, a text uh, and a message reminder to have a booster and I absolutely urge you to do that. What we do know is that for, for quite a lot of people the immune potency of the vaccine does start to wane after about six months so it is really so important to get that that booster in place. Um, I think the other probably important thing to say is around testing I'm <clears throat> hearing a lot, of, a lot of people say they've had a bad cold or, you know, a cough, uh, usual sort of symptoms. What, what is clear is those original, you know, key symptoms of COVID have now morphed so that we're seeing people who have cold, flu-like symptoms being COVID positive, runny nose, cough, headache. So if you have those symptoms, uh, I'd absolutely urge you to maybe do a lateral flow test first. And of course you can get those tests free from the chemist. But if you're in any doubt to please go and get a PCR test done and to be absolutely certain. The PCR test still remains the sort of gold standard of testing and of course allows the labs to look for uh, the Delta variant or any other potential potential new variants rising. Um, all of the NHS is incredibly busy. I don't think today's the day to go over that again. But what we are seeing is real pressure now in social care as well. And um, so uh, 
there are patients in hospital who are really waiting now to go home or go back to care homes and we, we really need as much help as possible from the whole community, friends, family, community to, to look after each other and to help get people out of hospital uh, and back to you know where one would assume everyone would like to be either in the homes or in a, in a care home um, to move forward. So that's a very important part and it just leads me to finish with that sense of as making our own individual risk assessments um, we're seeing less and less mask wearing in public places um, for example but it's still a very important part of personal protection so if you are if you feel worried in a public place then I'd absolutely urge you to have the confidence to put a mask on and maybe ask others to do so if you think they are um, you know potentially putting you and others at risk uh, and then the usual um, protection of uh, hand washing and distancing remains important. Finally, finally, um, as we get, uh, as we increase the number of our wards where we've got patients with COVID, we're going to have to restrict visiting onto those wards. We've still kept our general visiting policy open, but are reviewing that on a day by day basis. So before you come to hospital to visit someone, please will you check with our website um, what our rules of the day are and expect to be asked to put a mask on and abide by our rules when you come in. Thank you.